Here we have another one that is not written in the proper form. This is another one we have to do the complete the square steps with. So that's the first thing we want to do. Now what I also notice about this is that everything is divisible by 2. So that's actually a good habit to divide everything out. If you see a common factor, it's good to divide both sides by that. Also, it'll make your uh, the complete the square steps easier because you actually have a 1 in front of the x squared. That's usually what you want to go with. So I'm going to take this equation right here and I'm going to divide everything, both sides, by 2. By doing that, it's going to make the problem simpler by doing that. You're not always going to be able to do this on each problem, but this particular one we were able to do that. You get positive, positive x squared plus 2x plus 10y minus 19 equals 0. And now we have to get it set up properly because we want to do the complete the square steps. We want to make a space here, so I have x squared plus 2x, I'll leave a space. Everything else is going to go on the other side of the equation. So I get negative 10y plus 19. Both signs switch when we bring it across the equal sign. It's set up properly now. Now we're ready to do the complete the square steps. Again, the reason why we want to do complete the square is because we can get it down into a form that looks like this. Eventually it's going to factor down into this, and that's the whole reason why we want to do the complete the square steps. Complete the square steps we'll do over here. Step number one, take that number in front of the non-squared variable. Divide by two always is what you want to do there for your first step. You get one. Step number two requires you to square the answer you got in step number one. So one squared is going to equal one. That one we're going to add to both sides of the equation. So whatever you get in step two, that's what you're adding to both sides. That allows us to now write this as a quantity square. We created our perfect square. The answer you get in step number one is what goes inside the parentheses here. So that's going to be x plus one. Over here we get negative 10y plus 20. The last thing you want to do is you need to uh, factor out negative 10 because you want to get the y by itself inside the parentheses. So you're going to do negative 10 and we get y and then because we're taking out a negative here that will change that to a negative 2. So that way if we multiply it back through we'll get exactly the same thing we started with. This is now the correct format. We can now answer the rest of the questions. The vertex, opposite sign of each of these, opposite sign of that is negative 1. Opposite sign of this is positive 2. So we get negative 1, 2 for the vertex. For the focal width, we're going to take the absolute value of this number here in front of the parentheses. Absolute value of negative 10 is going to give us positive 10. So now we have that complete. I'm going to go ahead and clear some space now. We're going to be ready to uh, draw the graph. So the equation that we're going to use here, x plus 1 squared equals negative 10 y minus 2. This is going to exactly equal this one. If we were to take this and expand it all out and multiply the whole thing back through by 2 again, we would get exactly the same thing that we uh, started with there. Okay, so now that we, we're ready to look at the different models and see which direction this graph is going to open up to. The one that matches, if we look at those four models in the notes, is we have x minus h squared equals negative 4a y minus k. We're picking the one that has a negative in it because our original formula has a negative in it. This particular model is one where it's going to open down. So we have a parabola that opens down which means that your uh, from your vertex we have to go down with our a value uh, to get the focus and you're going to go up to get the directrix. So that's what the shape looks like. We have to figure out what the a value is. Now in this case we'll do negative 4a equals negative 10. Divide both sides by negative 4 and what you're going to get is you actually get a fraction or you can get a decimal depending on which one you want to use. Divide both sides by negative 4 you get positive 5 halves or 2.5. So not always are you going to get a a whole number for a. This time we get a, a fraction. That's okay. We can still graph it the same way. We're still going to start with your vertex. The vertex is going to be negative 1, 2. So we start by plotting that one. That's right here, negative 1, 2. And then we're going to, we're going to the model says that we got to go down to get our a value and up to get the directrix. From here, if I go down 2.5, I'm going to go down 2 to here and then I get uh, extra 0.5 will be right there. So that's going to be my 
focus. Now if I want to write the coordinates for that, that would be negative 1 and then I go down 2 and I go an extra half so I could either write that as negative 0.5 or uh, what I'll do here is write it as a fraction negative 1 half. Now I'm going to go up 2.5. So from here I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so it's going to be basically I'm going to go uh, based from here I'm going to go up 2, I'm sorry 2.5. So if I go up 2, I go up, up 2 to here and then that basically is going to put me right here at that level. So I go up two and an extra half. So I want to find out the court, the, what the equation for this line is. I know it's going to be y equals because it's horizontal. And so when I go up that amount, I want to see how far up it is from the zero here. So, I, so that's going to be four and a 0.5. So I could write y equals 4.5 or I could write as a fraction. That basically I would take two, two, and two plus five halves, that would give me uh, nine halves. So I could either write it like nine halves or again I could write it also as 4.5, either one. So nine halves would be the answer on that one, that's this one here. At the, the, uh, the focus, which is down here, that width needs to be 10. So I want to go five in one direction and five in the other direction. So here if I go, I have one here, I have two, three, four, five, so right here, I want to keep it at the same y value as the focus, so that's also going to be at negative 0.5. So I went 5 that way, and I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 this way. Make another dot right there. Now I have my two dots that I can use to connect, and now I have my parabola opening down. So we did exactly the same thing. We went down with our a value and up with our a value. It just said this time it was a decimal, so we went down 2.5 and up 2.5, but you have to do that from the vertex. So from the vertex we went up 2.5 and we went down 2.5 uh, to get the answer. This would be your completed graph.